How is everybody doing? Welcome back to another episode of The Banker Next Door. I am your host, Dr. Joe Berquist. This is the weekly banking update where I ask everybody to give me 30 minutes and I will give you all the banking news of the week. And with that said, let's get right into it. And let's talk for, we always, always like to give economic indicators of what's coming up the following week. So what's coming up next week? So on Tuesday, July 30th, we have CB Consumer Confidence, we have the Jolts job openings. We have API weekly crude oil stock. On Wednesday, we get the ADP non-farm employment change. We get the Chicago PMI pending home sales. We get an FOMC statement at two o'clock. We get the federal interest rate, the Fed interest rate decision at 2 p.m. And we all then we get the FOMC press conference at 2.30. On Thursday, August 1st, we get initial jobless claims. We get the manufacturing PMI. We get uh, construction spending. ISM manufacturing PMI. And then on Friday, August 2nd, we get the average hourly earnings. We get the non-farm payrolls. We get the unemployment rate and we get the U.S. Baker Hughes uh, total rig count. So a lot of economic activity this week. Uh, we've got the FOMC meeting on Wednesday. Now, uh, we've got obviously we got consumer confidence. We got a lot of uh, we got a lot of labor market coming up this week with obviously the jolts job openings initial jobless claims and then we got the non the, you know non-farm payrolls and unemployment rate on friday so a lot of job market data coming out this week a uh, little bit of real estate data with pending home sales construction spending uh but obviously wednesday is going to be the big fomc i'm not expecting them to do anything um, this month, I think they're, I like, I've said this for a couple months now. I think they were basically going to hold off for the summer and just kind of see what happens and how things unfold. And I think that if, if you are going to have a rate cut, I think it's, there's far more high, there's far more higher probability, um, coming in at the end of September or possibly the end of October. I think that's when you're going to see that potentially, uh, that first, uh, quarter point rate cut. So, but we shall, we shall see. You never, you never know. We can always, always be a curveball coming at you, right? Uh, okay, so let's get into some other news. So, uh, first Internet Bank Corp Chairman and CEO David Becker called regulatory scrutiny of fintech and banking as a service off the charts, saying regulators finally defined guidelines much better as how banks should interact with fintechs and BAAS. Uh, so we have a much better roadmap that we've had from the beginning of the time in this space, which we're complying with, Becker said on the company's second quarter earnings call. Now, I, got, I will have a little bit more to say about this in a few minutes, uh, but that's very interesting news there on that front. So uh, persistently high um, consumer deposit costs, along with a continued trend of maturing certificates of deposit repricing higher, are delaying Live Oak Bank Inc.'s uh, progress towards its target net interest margin. The trend has created substantial headwinds. In 2023 and 2024, CEO, CFO Walter Pfizer said on an earnings conference call. Now, this was, I think, very interesting because the persistent high consumer deposit costs along with the continued trend of maturing certificates of deposit repricing higher. Uh, that's uh, pretty much every bank is dealing with that. And that's why I wanted to point this out. I mean, that's a trend across, that's an industry-wide trend, not just on Live Oak Bank. They're not the only one dealing with that. Um, so, but, it, but I think a very important thing to point out. Um, this is fascinating. About 50,000 employees, or roughly 15% of J.P. Morgan Chase & Company's staff, may now use the bank's version of ChatGPT, which is called LLM Suite, to help them with writing, idea generation, and summarizing documents, the Financial Times reported, citing an internal memo. Think of LLM Suite as a research analyst that can offer information, solutions, and advice on a topic said the memo signed by Mark Erdos, uh, head of asset and wealth management, Teresa Heinz, Heisen, rather, uh, chief data and analytics officer, and Mike Yersioli, the asset and wealth management unit's chief information officer, according to the report. So this is very, very interesting. Um, if you watch some of the episodes, I the, some of the weekly banking updates from the last couple of weeks, I had reported that uh, Jamie Dimon had said that basically JP Morgan was integrating AI into pretty much every single one of their business units. So this news comes on top of that. 
so it's it's very fascinating that they've rolled out their own uh, basically AI system called LL, LLM Suite. Um, so I'm sure obviously more information will come on that in the coming weeks and months. So uh, Bank of America Corp's Cash App, Cash Pro app for corporate payments approvals surpassed a record 500 billion in transactions by mid-year, up nearly 40% from the middle of last year and on pace to reach a trillion dollars by the end of 2024, the banking giant said in a press release. That's pretty, that's pretty incredible. Uh, traders have been betting big against Canada's banking giants as mortgage risks and other loans going bad rise amid a struggling economy, Bloomberg News reported. So far this year, shorts are up $243 million on wagers against the against TD Bank, Royal Bank of Canada, Bank of Montreal, the Bank of Nova Scotia, Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, and National Bank of Canada, as per the report. Uh, Coinbase Global Unit uh, CB Payments LTD was fined 3.5 million by the UK's Financial Conduct Authority for allegedly bleaching, uh, bre bleaching, <laughs> breaching repeatedly a rule that prevents uh, serving high-risk customers a uh, rising serious raising serious concerns about potential money laundering. Uh, obviously, you know, with I think with uh, TD Bank's big issue there with uh, with um, Bank Secrecy Act and anti-money laundering issues going on there, obviously. So Coinbase, uh, no coincidence there with cryptocurrencies could potentially have some issues with money laundering. No real shock there. Uh, the Federal Reserve, Federal uh, the, uh, the Federal Reserve, the FDIC, and the Office of the Controller of the Currency are seeking public comment on their review of regulations every ten years to spot outdated and unnecessary requirements for their supervision in supervised institutions. U.S. federal bank regulators reminded banks of potential risks from third-party deposit arrangements and are requesting additional information on bank fintech arrangements. Yes, just like we said at the very beginning with the uh, first Internet Bank Corp, uh, I have reported a lot on the Synapse bankruptcy and how that has affected. I did an update like, on Evolve Bank and Trust last week, like what's going on with them. So obviously that whole BAAS model thing, very big thing in the news. Um, you know, check out some of the other episodes that I've done on that uh, if you want some more information there. So New York Community Bank Corp Inc. unit, a Flagstar Bank, agreed to sell its residential mortgage servicing business, including mortgage servicing rights and the third party origination platform to non-bank mortgage originator and servicer Mr. Cooper Group Inc. for about one point four billion. The transaction is expected to close in the fourth quarter. So New York Community Bank still working on trying to resolve, you know, some of their issues there, selling off some things, raising capital, you know, trying to get things uh, sorted out there. So Citigroup, uh, so the, the hits keep on coming for Citigroup. Again, if you've followed, uh, been following the weekly update for the last you know couple months, uh, City, the, a lot of problems for Citigroup. Citigroup Inc.'s erroneous loan reports were a primary reason why banking regulators fined the company $136 million earlier this year, the Financial Times reported, citing five people with direct knowledge of the matter. Uh, the Fed discovered the errors in the company's annual stress, stress test submission and gave it 30 days to submit a plan to fix the loan errors and other data issues, according to the report. Regulators could reportedly impose limits on the firm's ability to fund dividends and buybacks if the plan is not approved. Previously, unreported errors led to discord in the company's relationship with the consulting firm McKinsey, which the bank hired to remedy issues in a 2020 Fed consent order, the report added. Uh, CIBM Bank, a subsidiary of CIB Marine Bank Shares, uh, completed a sale leaseback transaction with uh, Mountain Seed Real Estate Services LLC, effective June 28th. Under the deal terms, CIBM Bank sold three properties owned and operated as bank office locations for approximately $6.5 million, inclusive of customary adjustments. Now, the reason why I pointed this particular uh, story out was because I had, again, done an episode a couple of weeks back of, so this has become a big thing. Uh, banks selling insurance units, banks doing sale leasebacks is basically, this is ways or strategies that banks are using to raise cash right now to offset if they had to take a, if they had to sell uh, you know, out of lo basically losing positions in their bond portfolios, which is basically unrealized losses on, you know, as, you know, as for sale, uh, it was AFS, yeah, as for sale securities or whole held HTM held to maturities. Um, they, 
uh, basically, so if a bank was to sell that and take a loss on it, there, they, you know, some banks have been selling off assets in your insurance unit, uh, selling branches to try to raise money to offset those losses. So I just say that it's just something I wanted to point out with that. So uh, serial acquirer United Community Banks, Inc. is open to M&A, but small banks, commercial real estate portfolios are making it tough. You still got some banks on credit, particularly commercial real estate. Uh, the banks that we tend to look at tend to be smaller banks and they tend to be commercial real estate heavy. So that's a little bit of a headwind, said Chairman and CEO Lynn Harton in an earnings call. Uh, Visa Inc. reported a slight slowdown in the growth of U.S. payment volume in the first three weeks of July, prompting questions about the momentum in its core business. Uh, the company's payment volume growth ticked down to 4% year over year in the first 21 days of July versus 5% growth in the three months ended June 30th. Uh, a group of Republican members of the U.S. House of Representatives encouraged the Federal Reserve Board to approve Capital One Financial Corp's proposed deal to acquire Discover Financial Services. Uh, the acquisition could lead to increased competition in banking generally and in the credit card sector more specifically. The group of 17 Republicans, including members of the House Financial Services Committee, told Fed Chair Jeremy Powell in a July 24th letter. Uh, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau issued a circular to law enforcement agencies and regulators warning them about the implications of companies forcing workers to sign broad non-disclosure agreements that could deter whistleblowing. Um, the, so this is interesting. What I'm going to say about this is the federal regulators have done an, atro an absolutely atrocious job of protecting whistleblowers in recent years. Um, recent whistleblowers that have come out to blow the whistles on a lot of big companies have been treated absolutely horrifically. And the regulators have done, in my opinion, a horrible job of protecting these people and taking care of them. Um, so that I think that's something that needs a much broader open public conversation about uh, how whistleblowers are protected when they come forward. So that's my little rant on that. So uh, federal, the FDIC uh, Vice Chair Travis Hill urged the three major federal banking agencies, the, uh, the OCC, the Fed, and the FDIC to jointly repropose the Basel III endgame capital rules and allow the public an opportunity to provide feedback on what the agencies are considering. Um, I'm starting to get the feeling now that basically that with the election, presidential election year, this may become a dead issue. Uh, this this may be, you know, th th as this continues to linger on and on, I'm starting to get the feeling now that basically politicians are going to sit back and basically say, hey, you know, we're not, uh, we're probably not going to touch that. So, uh, okay, let's see. Do I have anything else in here? Um, let's see here. Uh, okay, this is kind of interesting. The U.S. Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations, chaired by Senator Richard Blumenthal, a uh, Democrat from Connecticut, slammed the three biggest banks that own banking app Zelle, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America, in a bipartisan staff report saying they are not doing enough to protect consumers from the growing risk of scams and fraud as they reimbursed victims only 12% of the time. Uh, yes, I would concur with that statement. I think you know there has been a ridiculous amount of fraud on on the Zell network and, and Venmo too, Venmo too, to be fair. Um, and that is definitely something that needs to be uh, worked out or worked on. So, uh, okay. A little bit of earnings news here. So Truist Financial Corp reported second quarter net income available to common shareholders of 826 million or 62 cents per share down from 1.23 billion or 92 cents per Per share in the year ago period. Total revenues were down 6.5 billion due primarily to security losses, while adjusting revenues up were up 3% due to higher net interest income. And like I said, Truist was one of those companies I was just talking about. They sold their insurance unit to basically help offset uh, the primary losses that they took on the sale of securities. So that's a perfect example of one of the things I just mentioned. Western Alliance Bank Corp shares rose by about 8.7% around 2 p.m. July 19th after the company posted strong loan deposit and earnings growth for the second quarter and a significant increase in net charge-offs driven by a downtown San Diego office property. Um, 
Glacier Bancorp expects to add fewer deposits than originally anticipated from acquiring six Montana branches of Heartland Financial USA uh, due to industry headwinds around deposits and the proper determination of which customers were associated with the branches uh, Glacier is acquiring in a deal that would close July 19th. Uh, American Express Company raised its outlook of marketing expenses for full year 2024 to around $6 billion from the previous guidance of around $5.5 billion, in part because the environment is just as competitive as it's ever been, said the Card, Net Card Network's chairman and CEO, Steve Squirry. Um, the Federal Reserve fined financial technology company Green Dot Corp $44 million for allegedly unfair and deceptive practices and a deficient consumer compliance risk management program, the central bank said in a press release. Um, very interesting there. Okay, so what are some other things we have here? Um, agencies issue statement on risks of third-party deposit arrangements. The federal bank regulated, regulatory agencies issued a joint statement reminding banks of potential risks associated with third-party deposit arrangements and published a request for information on bank fintech arrangements. Uh, the statement, which does not establish new supervisory expectations, details the potential risks and provides examples of risk management practices for these arrangements. It also reminds banks of relevant legal requirements, guidance, and related sources, resources, and it provides insights that the agencies have gained through their supervision. So that's kind of kind of interesting there. Uh, GDP increased two to Increased 2.8% in Q2. The gross domestic product increased at an annual rate of 2.8% in the second quarter, according to the advanced estimate released by the Commerce Department. In the first quarter, real GDP increased 1.4%. Uh, yes, I am having a super hard time believing this number. Uh, we, you're telling me we jumped from 1.4% to 2.8% in the second quarter? Yeah, I'm not buying that. Uh, I would not be shocked if in a month or two that number gets revised right back down to maybe uh, 2%, to 1.9%, something like that. I would not be surprised. Durable goods orders dropped in June. The Commerce Department reported that new orders for manufactured durable goods decreased 6.6% in June after four months of increases. Um, let's see here. FinCEN updates beneficial ownership information. The Financial Crimes Enforcement Network updated its beneficial ownership information frequently asked questions to include new information for entities that are disregarded for U.S. tax purposes. Uh, okay, if you are a small business owner out there and you have not, you do not know what beneficial ownership information is and what you need to do as far as reporting, I want you to stop watching this right now. And I want you to do a search and go back to my episode on beneficial ownership information and watch that immediately. Immediately. Do it right now. Go, 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 go. The rest of you stay right here. Okay, uh, stablecoin drawbacks outweigh potential benefits. The Financial Stability Board said that even if a stablecoin is properly designed and well-regulated, it may not necessarily have a positive impact on cross-border payments as the drawbacks could outweigh any potential benefits. In a new report, the FSB Financial Stability Board uh, said that stablecoins present challenges related to competition, consumer and investor protection, market integrity, data privacy, money laundering, and terrorist financing, and financial stability risks for emerging market and developing economies. Um, I find it interesting that the regulators are just, they just seem to keep doing this dance around cryptocurrencies. They're dancing, they're hot, they're dancing. You know, it's like, it's like, what? It's like, well, guys. Let's get some. Let's, if you're going to regulate it, let's 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 do something here, okay? How about we do something before we have another FTX, uh, before we have another, you know, Binance getting ready to go, you know, potentially go down. Like, you know, I I just I don't understand what this 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 endless dance is. Um, I have a couple theories, but somebody might somebody might label me a conspiracy theorist if I come out with that stuff. So I'll hold off on that for right now. So okay. Um, international authorities, AI can turbocharge unfair practices. Uh, while there are many potential benefits to artificial intelligence, there are many risks to competition as well, according to an international group of agencies. Um, you know, so there are, um, risks to competition. So, uh, so, um, I think somebody should have given this to JP Morgan. They should have said, listen, guys, before you went full bore and went nuts with the AI, and created your own AI, your own personal in-house AI, you should have maybe read this report. 
Just saying. House hearing on decentralized finance next week. Here we go again. So the House Financial Services Committee's Digital Assets, Financial Technology, and Inclusion Subcommittee scheduled a hearing for Tuesday, July 30th on decentralized finance. Uh, so they're again, they'll look at that. I don't know, more talk, blah, 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 blah. Okay, existing home sales drop in June. Existing home sales decreased 5.4% in June, and we're also down 5.4% from a year ago, according to the National Association of Realtors. The median sales price rose 4.1% from June 2023, as the inventory of unsold existing homes rose 3.1% from last month. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, more stablecoin nonsense. Uh, okay. All right. Now let's, let's get into some other stuff here. So, uh, as I reported a few minutes ago, so Republican representatives asked the fed to approve the capital one, uh, discover card merger. So a group of Republican members of the U S house of representatives encouraged the federal reserve board to approve capital one financial course proposed acquisition of discover financial services. Like I said, um, and so they're, they're proposing that at the same time, uh, it was reported a couple days ago that Capital One's uh, Discover deal faces opposition from community groups. Uh, Capital One Financial Corp's proposed acquisition of Discover Financial Services should be denied following Capital One's history of maltreatment of customers, community groups told regulators. Capital One is a bad actor with a long history of consumer abuse. Uh, Jesse Van Toll, president and CEO of the National Community Reinvestment Coalition, told the Federal Reserve Board and the Office of the Controller of the Currency in a July 19th public meeting about the planned deal, which was announced in February and is worth roughly $35 billion. Uh, the NCRC is the main advocacy group that reaches funding agreements with banks. Um, so basically, so they're protesting it and the Republicans have come out in favor of it. So uh, we'll see you know, what happens there with that. Um, okay. Regulatory scrutiny of fintech BAAS off the chart, said for, uh, First Internet CEO, as I talked about earlier. Um, you know, regulatory scrutiny of fintech and banking as a service is off the charts. Uh, regulatory scrutiny, again, is off the chart. No question about that. Becker said on the company's second quarter earnings call, finally, during this last quarter, regulators defined guidelines a lot better as to how we should interact with the fintechs and the banking as a service product. So we have a much better roadmap than we've had from the beginning of the time in this space, which we're complying with. In response, First Internet has stepped up its due diligence for prospective fintech partners, though the company was already complying with 90% of regulators' expectations, he added. I understand where some of the pitfalls and issues are, and we're digging in deeper. As a result, uh, prospective fintech partners have been surprised at the intensity of First Internet's due diligence. If there's a common theme from some of our prospects, it's, oh my God, nobody ever asked this question. Why are you guys digging in so deeply? Uh, Becker's comments come as regulatory pressure on bank fintech uh, partnerships with fintech firms and their impact on capital has intensified. Regulators have issued a high volume of BAAS-related consent orders uh, to banks with fintech partnerships, which has led to growing compliance costs. So moving forward, growth within the space will likely remain subdued until the dust settles on what recently happened with Synapse Financial Technologies. Um, even so, all of First Internet's fintech and BAS clients are growing. Becker said First Internet's revenue from the fintech business is up 300% in the first half compared to the same period last year. Uh, so again, very, very interesting information there, and we will continue to see how that plays out. Um, Janny Montgomery Scott. So Janny deal means active depository. I bank is changing bank ownerships. So investment fund managed by private equity firm KKR and company agreed to acquire Penn Mutual Life Insurance Company subsidiary Janny Montgomery Scott, uh, with regular, which regularly ranks among the top 10 financial advisors on the number of U.S. bank M&A deals. Janny's wealth management arm is the biggest driver behind its revenue, which topped $1 billion in 2023. Um, Michigan-based First Choice Financial and Ventura Financial agree to a merger deal uh, that would be valued at $180 million. Uh, once the It looks like when the two banks together, it will have about $5.3 billion in consolidated assets and 56 offices in Western, Central, and Southeastern Michigan. Uh, Trustmark repositions bonds in the second quarter, sells non-performing mortgages. So more of that. 
Pennsylvania-based ACNB to buy in-state uh, Peer Traditions Bank Corp in a $75.3 million deal. And we have average net loss rate uh, up for six major credit card issuers in June with delinquencies being flat. The average credit card net loss for the six major U.S. credit card issuers increased in June. Uh, the average annualized net charge-off rate for J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Citigroup, Discover, Capital One, Financial, and American Express stood at 2.23% in June, up four basis points from the previous month and up 55 basis points from the same period a year ago. Um, so, yeah, so obviously continuing to keep a close eye on credit card delinquency. Okay, so now what I wanted to do here the last couple minutes is I wanted to just bring in a couple articles that I wanted to show everybody real quick here. So large bank executives remain cautious on M&A capital markets revenue outlook. So a year over year pop in second quarter investment banking revenue was not enough to erase concerns from the executives of large banks about the deal-making outlook. So the aggregate investment banking revenue for Bank of America, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and Morgan Stanley jumped 39.7% year over year in the second quarter. Um, so there's that. And then going in here, so U.S. regional bank deposits come back under pressure in Q2 of 2024. So most U.S. regional banks posted sequential deposit declines during the second quarter as de deposit competition reignited. Um, all but two of the nine U.S. banks with total assets between $100 billion and $1 trillion saw their quarter-over-quarter -quarter deposit balances fall, a stark contrast from the first quarter when six of the nine posted deposit growth. Uh, the net interest margin pressure was mitigated, though, with five of the nine banks in the analysis reporting quarterly net interest margin expansion compared with none last quarter. Uh, but basically, deposits are back under pressure again. So basically, we had six quarters of deposit deposits leaving the industry. And then we had two growth quarters where, you know, deposits started to come back in, but now it looks like that trend may be starting to reverse itself yet again. Um, if I can just scroll down here. Um, yeah. So we're going to keep, we're going to keep an eye on this. So uh, community banks hit hardest in Q2 2024 deposit decline. So most of the U.S. banks reporting the largest percentage declines in total deposits in the second quarter were community banks. Uh, among publicly traded U.S. banks who reported earnings by July 22nd, total deposits fell 1.4% quarter over quarter to $10.3 trillion according to S&P Global Market Intelligence. Uh, uh, of the 20 banks with the largest sequential declines on a percentage basis, only M&T Bank Corp had deposits over $6 billion. Um, among the other banks with large declines, Bank 7 Corp's deposits fell 6.3% to $1.48 billion, mainly due to one very large deposit. Uh, at Park Bank Corp, where deposits dropped 4.3% to $1.5 billion in the second quarter, President and CEO Vidia, uh, Vito uh, Pantaleone said the higher for longer interest rate environment puts continued pressure on banks in the battle for deposits and the cost of funding. Yes, absolutely. Um, then we look at some of the larger banks, deposit trends. And then finally, last article I got here, U.S. bank capital offering slow but still outpaced 2023 activity. So the total value of capital offerings from the U.S. banking sector fell in the second quarter, but remained above the year ago level. Capital issuance is for the three months ended June 30th, total 21 billion, down 38.5% from the previous quarter and up 30.9% year over year, according to S&P Global Market Intelligence. So there you have it. Okay, so. A lot of information, a lot of stuff going on, even in the dog days of summer, even in these slow days, we still have a ton of stuff going on. So what I would like to urge everybody now is to go check out just a just a quick review, some of the other episodes that I have posted up this week. So uh, I had an interview with commercial banker Owen Lafave. If anybody has not seen that, please go check it out. It was a really interesting conversation with a great uh, commercial banker who is a uh, market president for the Bank of Tampa down in Florida. Uh, I did uh, why are banks struggling to find compliance officers? I tried to look in, you know, you know, with the cost 
and the pressures on compliance people. Why, you know, you know, what's going on there? I did have all the buyers in banking disappeared. Like what's kind of a little bit, a little bit update on the M&A market as to why some banks are finding it hard to find buyers. Uh, how is higher for longer affecting bank margins? I get into what's kind of going on with the bank's compression on bank's net interest margin spread. Um, I took a, take a peek in on what's going on. How are things in private equity? So take a peek in on what's going on in the private equity market. And then um, I do, I am working on, I don't know if I'm going to get it out or not. I am working on an episode on, on generative AI and what that means for the future banking workforce. So I, I do get out, if I do get that out this weekend, great. If not, I might have to save that for next week for you guys, but, uh, but please go check out some of the other content on the channel as that always helps. But I hope that you guys really enjoyed once again, the weekly banking update. If you liked this episode, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe as that really helps the channel. Remember we are on YouTube rumble and all major podcast platforms. Please be sure to leave your comments down below. I hope everyone has an awesome week out there and I will be back same time, same bad channel next week with another weekly banking update. Have an awesome week out there, everybody. See you soon.